Hey everybody, happy Saturday. I'm Corey and thanks for joining me. Today we are working on Advent of Code 2023. It is December 2nd, so that means it's day two. We got day one done at midnight when it came out and day two we didn't do at midnight, but I think we're going to try for day three at midnight. But anyways, let's jump right into day two and get started reading our challenge and then we'll hop into code. So day two, cube conundrum. Sorry, I'm moving my mic. Day two, cube conundrum. You've launched high into the atmosphere. The apex of your trajectory just barely reaches the surface of a large island floating in the sky. You gently land in a fluffy pile of leaves. It's quite cold, but you don't see much snow. An elf runs over to greet you. The elf explains that you've arrived at Snow Island and, and apologizes for the lack of snow. Hey, Code Guru 42 thanks for joining and hanging out. And apologizes for the lack of snow. He'll be happy to explain the situation, but it's a bit of a walk, so you have some time. They don't get many visitors up here. Would you like to play a game in the meantime? As you walk, the elf shows you a small bag and some cubes, which are either red, blue, or green. Each time you play this game, he will hide a secret number of cubes of each color in the bag, and your goal is to figure out information about the number of cubes. Uh, yes, Code Guru, I did struggle with day one just a little bit. We did get it solved. Um, but just struggled a little bit more than I expected for a day one challenge. Um, I had trouble finding the edge cases for part two. I had, like, I had some code for part two pretty quickly, um, but it didn't work. And then I had, I, there was like two or I think two-ish edge cases that I had to work through that it just took me a long time to find. Um, so yeah, I'm, I've heard that day two was a little bit better, but I haven't read the challenge yet. So fingers crossed. <laughs> But yeah, it does seem like most people, or not, you know, most of the people I've talked to did find day one more challenging than expected. Yeah. Yeah, you had a similar experience, it sounds like, Code Guru. So yeah, let's let's try day two here. Have you tried day two, Code Guru? Just curious. Um, so our goal is to figure out the number of cubes. To get information, once a bag has been loaded with cubes, the elf will reach into the bag, grant, grab a handful of random cubes, show them to you, and then put them back in the bag. He'll do this a few times per game. You play several games and record the information from each game, your puzzle input. Each game is listed with its ID number, like the 11 in game 11, followed by a semicolon separated list of subsets of cubes that are re revealed from the bag, like three red, five green, four blue. For example, the record for a few games might look like this. So the first time we pulled three, blue, four red, and then one red, two green, six blue, and then two green. Sorry, Twitch chat for just a sec. Yeah, trying to do them as they drop. Yeah, I think I'm going to try to get back to doing them as they drop, but I was very tired last night, so I didn't get to this one at midnight, but I'm going to try to do day three at midnight as well. Um, just because it's fun to do them when they drop. Not because I am really racing to get on a leaderboard or anything, but it's fun. Okay, so this is our puzzle input. These are separate games, and each game has separate pulls from the bag, separated by semicolons. Got it. In game one, three sets of cubes are revealed from the bag. Yep, and they're put back in each time. The first set, yep, is the three red. Three blue, four red. One red, two green, six blue, and then two green. The elf would first like to know which game would have been possible if the bag contained only 12 red cubes, 13 green cubes, and 14 blue cubes. In the example above, games 1, 2, and 5 would have been possible if the bag had been loaded in that configuration. However, game 3 would be impossible because at one point the elf showed you 20 red cubes at once. Similarly, game 4 would have been impossible because the elf showed you 5 blue cubes at once. If you add up the IDs of the game that would have been possible, you get 8. Determine which games would have been possible if the bag had been loaded with only 12 red, 13 green, and 14 blue. What is the sum of the IDs of those games? Uh, sorry, Twitch chat's in my way. Um... Yeah, right. I, I do want to try to stay on some schedule for the live stream, Code Guru, because you're totally right. Um, having a schedule is better. Um, but I need to do better about all that streaming stuff and advertising and sticking to a schedule. So um, all of my things are also going to be on YouTube. So if uh, you miss my streams, you can catch them there just as an FYI. Um, but yeah, 
always always good to keep a set schedule for these streams and i'm trying to be better about that in general okay so i think i know what we're doing here so let's just dive in get some stuff set up i think this one's mostly at least part one here is mostly just going to be about parsing things i think the actual logic here is relatively straightforward we're just trying to eliminate ones that aren't valid um based on the number okay one more twitch break I've tried to stream while coding and I get it. It's hard for me to set a schedule for it. Yeah, it's it's it gets hard. And then, well, I'm going to try to do as best I can in December. But these advent of code ones are hard because doing one stream a day or maybe two if I do one at midnight uh, just gets to be a lot. But I have a lot of fun with it, so I don't want to not do it. Um, but but it is a lot. OK, so this is our day two challenge. What's it called? Cube conundrum. Cube con. Oh, I don't know how to spell conundrum. Conundrum. OK, conundrum. That was easy. Um, and then we have to name it because it starts with a digit, which cargo uh, slash rust doesn't like. I'm actually not sure which one, uh, like where the issue is, but it's okay. We will just do that. And then the last thing that we need to do is add this to our workspace, cargo toml. Cube conundrum. CD to two. Cargo build. Cargo build. I just don't think I can spell right. A uh, conundrum. Ah, conundrum. There we go. Cool. Okay. And so now let's just grab our input, our sample input to get started here. New file, uh, sample.input. Um, and then let's make a function for part one that takes some input as a string and returns uh, u32, uh, just a sum of the these IDs. And we're just going to say they're u32s. I think that's fine. Um, okay, so let's start parsing things. We're going to need a, a struct, and we're going to make structs this time. I didn't do that in day one just because I didn't think it was super necessary. Uh, so a game has an ID which is a u32 um, and then it also has what are we going to call them maybe draws um, like cube draws cube pulls I don't know we're going to call them cube draws and it's a vec of cube draws um, and then our cube draw okay so we're setting up our basic main.rs here um, we copied our sample. Oh, we didn't actually copy it. I made a file for it, but didn't copy it in. Uh, so here's our sample input file. And we're setting up some vex for the parsing. So we have a game that has an ID and then a vec of draws. And then a draw. I think I'm just going to hard code these colors. So red count, um, blue count, and green count. Um, blue, red, blue, green. Yeah, I think that is basically what we want to do. Um, and then we just want some parse methods on here. So like for our game, we're going to impl game and we're going to give it a function parse that takes in an input string um, and returns a self. Um, and then so a game is a single line. So I think what we need to do is do I want to pull these out? off with regexes or do I want to just do some simple string parsing I don't really know uh let's just do some simple string parsing I think uh so let uh split equals input now we're not going to split on that because that would just be lines we're going to split on this semicolon here um collect it to a Vec, that's fine. I think it's always going to be that, but I don't need to specify the type there. Uh, so then let game ID section is first split. Let cube draw section is the second split. Um, so let game ID. Oh, cool. That'll work for me. Uh, so Copilot helped me there. We're going to take our game section, which is going to be this. We're going to split on white space, which is that string. Um, collect it to a vec and then grab the second thing, which is the what at, writes what is right after the game, which is going to be our ID. Um, parse that to a U32 and then uh, just unwrap just to not deal with errors. So that was nice and easy. Uh, so let 
cube draws is cube draw section. So then that is this whole section. And the first thing that we want to do is split on these semicolons. Okay, so now we've split on the semicolons and we have these. So now I think I want to take this string um, and map this through, uh, this is like a cube draw. Um, yeah, and we want to do cube draw dot parse of this and we don't have that method yet, but that's okay. Uh, so let's do that. Struct cube draw. Impl parse. Oh, parse, lowercase. Yep, okay. Let's see if Copilot did this nicely. Um, so these, one thing that's nice, they're interesting about this, which I think is important, is these aren't in order. These can be in any order. Like, it doesn't always go green, then red. Oh, green, red, blue, green, blue, red. Yeah, so the order is different here, so we're going to need to handle that, but that should be okay. Um, so this wasn't going to work, though, because this is assuming things are in order, and it's assuming there's no words in between it, so this isn't quite right. But for one of these, and I might write some, t I might actually do some tests for this now. Um, so, like, let's actually write some tests right now. Config test, mod test, uh, use superstar, yep. Um, when I'm not want to test parse one, I want to test parse cube draw. Um, and we're going to give it an input like this. Um, let cube draw equals parse the input. Um, assert equals... Uh, well, red count is zero here. Uh, assert equals blue is six and green is eight. Thank you. Uh... Cube draws defined multiple times. Oh, impl cube draw. There we go. Uh, now what are you super upset about? Unexpected, expected that. Wait, what? Oh, I am just messing up my Rust syntax completely here. Uh, this isn't impl parse, it's function parse. Okay, um, and then let's just throw a to-do in here so that this will compile. And let's try to run this test. Um, oh, and uh, things just aren't compiling yet, which is pretty fair. Um, this needs a to-do. Um, and this is a vec of something. There we go. Now it at least runs. Can I run this test? Perfect. It fails, but it at least runs. Okay, so now we have our cube draw, and I think I want to take the things and split them on commas. Uh, so we're going to do, yeah, let's just remove all of this. Let's split equals input. Nope, I don't want to split on white space, which is the exact line I just deleted. Thank you, copilot. Uh, we're going to split on commas instead. Um... CodeGuru says, can you create an expected instance and just assert equality on the entire instance all at once? Totally. Let's do that. Um, so to do that, I need to derive a partial equal on this so that I can actually do the comparison of all the struct fields without having to do anything exciting. Um, so now I can do an assert equals down here. Um, yep. Wow. Copilot. Look at that. Oh. Oh. Okay, and then this error message says to use assert equals, the thing needs to implement debug so that if it fails, it can show you like a nice representation of it. Um, and we can just stick a derive a debug on that struct as well. And there we go. Now we can not do the individual pieces. Um, and we should get basically the same failure here. Uh, oh, this is doesn't work yet, so I would need it to do, and then it's not going to get to our error message. So we'll get there in just a second. Um, so then this is the split. I actually don't want to collect to a vec right now because the first thing that I want to do is trim them. Yep. Um, because they, they have white space around things and I just want to trim it to just this. Um, okay. So now, yeah, no problem. Feel free to ask any questions about, especially about Rust, if there's things that I go over quickly that you'd like some more explanation on. That's definitely what I uh, want to do and want to, want to show off.
Um, and if you're really interested, you can check out my blog and YouTube, CoreyJA.com, and my YouTube is CoreyJA. I've got lots of Rust coding videos, and I am just starting to work on a Rust course um, that I hope to release sometime in the new year. So uh, be on the lookout for that if that's interesting to you. Um, but done with self-promotion for just a second, and let's think about how I want to implement this. So we now have these individual strings, and I need to, like... Maybe we'll just collect them to a vec. Yep, so these are um, colored draws or something. Um, and the format, oops, format of colored draw is, and no, it's, it's not that. It's just eight green. Um, so I think I'm just going to do this really not amazingly, but that's pretty okay. Oh, and yes, I am the Battlesnake guy, correct. I haven't done Battlesnake in a little bit, but yes, that is very much where you probably uh, know me from. Um, so yes, I, I do do some Battlesnake, and it's been a bit, but I would love to get back to, to either building my snake or working on the game engine. I guess probably working on the game engine at the moment is, is seeming like it would be uh, the next thing I do, but but yeah. Oh, you saw my talk, talk at RustConf. Oh, that's where I recognize your username from. Thank you for reminding me, and uh, glad to have you along hanging out. Thanks. Okay, so let's just do like a red count, and I'm going to do... And actually, wait, the colored draw is this, so why don't I just split it um, on white space again? Um, and then collect it to a vec again. Uh, so this is wrong now. This is now a vec of those. Um, map, trim white space, collect to a vec. That looks right to me. Well, I can tell it just not to collect to a vec and just collect to something. Oh, too many, too many parentheses. There we go. And now it'll go to a back. Uh, Code Guru says, I have started a Battlesnake but haven't gotten far with it. I'm probably Code Apprentice on the Rust Discord. Yeah, that makes sense. I think I, I think I had put that together. Um, but, but thanks. Yeah. Always good to have you hanging out. Um, colored draw. Yep. Perfect. Oh my gosh, I love it. Copilot just did exactly what I wanted. So we're going to get a of each colored draw is this. Okay, so this is a vec of vex of strings. So it's a vector, and then each inner vector is something like this. The count, and then the color. So to get the red count, um, we can do something like this. And let's actually do this, and let's do count for color. Takes in a... Love it. Uh, so it takes in our color draw, the vex, and it takes in which color we're looking for. Iterates over all of the vectors. Finds one where the second bit is the color we're looking for. And then takes the first bit and parses it to a number. If you don't find anything, then there's just zero of that. Um, so now red count can just be count for color of color draw and the hard-coded string red. Um, one thing that I kind of like about Rust is that I can just define functions in functions, and this function is now only available inside here. Um, but besides that, it's just a normal function. So this isn't like a closure where like I have to pass in colored draw. Like it doesn't inherit it from the other scope or anything. And I could use a closure if I wanted to. Um, but this just lets me like scope a function to just be inside here, which is kind of cool. Um, so let's do the other ones. Let blue count, let green count, and then... Our cube draw is all of these things. Um, cool. And then let's follow Clippy here. Um, so apparently calling trim before split white space isn't important. You can just remove trim. Love that. Um, oh, and then this is a nice one. So it's I take a reference to a vec, but it's a little um, more, it's a little nicer in Rust to actually take a reference to a slice. And then I could either pass an array or a vec or um, more options. And since I wasn't doing anything specific with a vec, uh, Rust is recommending I do this, which works perfect for me. Um, awesome. So this is a vec. Actually, let's just keep going. Maybe we'll come back and clean up later. But let's see if that parses correctly. 
Awesome. Yes, one test passed. So I think we're doing... I think parsing is working awesome. Um, cool. Okay, so this is just a to-do. We have our cube draws here. Um, I don't know why I did this as a two. I think we're basically done, right? Game is... ID is the game ID and then cube draws. Awesome. And let's just figure out some clippies. This is a string but can be a character. Um, this is telling me that I don't need to make this closure. I can just pass parse to map. Just like that. Okay. That parse is never used. And that's and because of that, this parse is never used. So let's start parsing it. Let game equals game.parse input. Oh wait, no, this a game is a is a line. Uh so let games equal input. Uh, and I could do split on, on a new line, but there, there's a lines method that's basically the same thing. Um, okay, so each line we map game.parse collectivex. So now we have a list of games. Um, and then you asked what my editor is. Is this VS Code with some UI customizations? So this is a fork of VS Code called Cursor, um, and it adds some AI LLM stuff. So like I can do this uh, command K to generate, and I could talk to an LLM. I don't know why it defaulted to three and a half. I don't ever want that. Um, so it's basically VS Code with a little bit of the LLM stuff on top. The theme that I'm using, um, is Cat Poochin. Come on, there, Cat Poochin. Oh man, it's, it's, uh, it, I, I don't know why it's not, oh, there we go. Cat Poochin. Oh, because I didn't do the double P uh, for VS Code. It's got a really nice, uh, dark mode with some, some pastel colors. I'm really liking it. Um, and another person who hangs out on stream and in my Discord a bit is a uh, developer of the theme. So it's really fun to use something that uh, someone I know kind of works on. Um, okay, so. And then I think what I want to do is I'm going to make another instance. So let, um, what do I want to call this instance? Uh, like, valid dating i don't know valid validate against i don't really love that um but and it's 12 13 12 red uh 13 green and 14 blue um so then let valid games equals games dot iter filter um and it's not contains um it's game dot valid for and then validate against i don't love my naming here uh but i think that's kind of close to what i want and then i'm just gonna debug out our valid games uh, i think this is gonna get mad at me but i can fix it this is gonna get mad at me because i haven't had game implement debug yet but this is easy i can just derive debug um Copilot decided to derive partial equals for me too. I don't need partial equals, but might as well. Um, and then I'm going to implement. Oh man, it didn't give me the option to implement. Oh yeah, generate method. There we go. Um, okay. So valid for. If this is, a game is valid for this if all of its draws are valid. So self dot cube draws dot iter. Um, and it's doing this. Oh, that's interesting. That might be what I want, but I don't like how it wrote it. So all, um, and then cube draw, cube draw dot valid for, we're just going to do the valid for again and pass this through. Um, so let's define this method. Okay. So valid for now for a specific cube draw, it's valid if your counts are less than the counts from the other thing. So self dot red count is less than or equal to red count, blue counts less than or equal to blue count, and green count is less than or equal to green count. Um, I wonder if I could implement the order for this and just say that self is less than validate against and do that if all of these are true. That might break the order and partial order traits because I'm not sure it would be like communicative or maybe that's why I want partial order, not order, to do a par an ordering that only compares two elements but isn't f to a full set. But maybe we'll get there in refactoring. I think this is fine for now. Um, so let's actually just run this. So let uh, sample input is that. Sample input should, oops, I think is in source. Uh, 
sample.input. Oh, I let Copilot do the naming too much and I missed it. Awesome. Okay, so then let a sample part one answer equals part one of sample input debug out sample part one answer. We can run this and it's going to panic because it hit this to do, but that's fine. I just wanted to see the debug. Um, so which games are valid? Game five is valid. Game two is valid and game one is valid. Is that right? Game one, two, and five. One, two, five. And then what am I supposed to do? Add up all those and get eight? Yep. Okay. Uh, so then the answer here is just valid games dot uh, iter dot map ID dot sum. Perfect. And we can run our main and it should just tell us sample is eight. Awesome. So now let's grab my input. New file my dot input paste it in go back to main uh, do let my input uh, let my part one answer and let's debug that out my part one answer go 2545 there we go awesome Part one complete. Let's do part two. And actually, let's do a commit real quick. I didn't do great about doing commits regularly in day one. So let's do this for day two. Day two, part one, done. Nice and easy. Perfect. Just making sure it didn't commit any files I didn't want it to. Continue to part two. The elf says they've stopped producing snow because they aren't getting any water. He isn't sure why the water stopped. However, he can show you how to get the water source to check it out for yourself. It's just up ahead. As you continue your walk, the elf poses a second question. In each game you played, what is the fewest number of cubes of each color that could have been in the bag to make the game possible? Again, consider the following example game from earlier. I think this is going to be the same sample input. In game one, the game could have been played with as few as four red, two green, and six blue cubes. If any color had even one fewer, the game would have been impossible. Um, so basically, this is just finding the minimum of all of these numbers, of all of these colors. The power of a set of cubes is equal to the numbers of red, green, and blue cubes multiplied together. The power of the minimum set of cubes in game one is 48, because it's two ta 4 times 2 times 6. 4 times 2 times 6. Yeah, that's 48. Perfect. Um, in games 2 through 5, it was these numbers respectively. Adding up these five powers produces this sum. For each game, find the minimum set of cubes that must have been present. What is the sum of the power of these sets? Woohoo! Okay, we should be able to do this one relatively easily. Um, especially because we already have all this modeled. So I think this is going to be pretty straightforward. Uh, so let's write a function for part two. Actually, let's hide my editor for now. Uh, part two is not at all like that. So that's okay. Um, input at string to a u32. Okay, so uh, let games equals input lines parse game. Yep, okay, so now we have our vec of games. So then for each of these, I guess it's actually pretty easy. I want to do let game, uh, actually, it's just I can just do the answer here probably. Games.iter, iterate over these, map to call game dot um power i think it's power minimum power minimum power that's what i'm going to call this function um, and then we're just going to sum that for all of the things so now we have to implement minimum power um and it returns uh what have i been doing u32 u32 that's our number operator at the moment uh, could have been a u size could have been it in lots of things we're gonna do a u32 for now Okay, so now I need to find the minimum power for a specific game. Um, so let minimum minimum equal uh, self dot cube draws dot first dot unwrap. Um, or I could like start them at maxes. Eh, let's maybe do that because that's a fun. That's a fun. That's a like a maybe a better way to 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 show this. Um, 
so then this is like U32 max for all of these. Can I just do max? Eh, kind of. It, it, it does want to do it that way. Oh, I do not like that. I want to prefix it. Uh, I don't like imp I don't like uh, including just max as a constant without telling it it comes from U32. That just didn't seem, seem super clean. Um, so this is going to be mutable because I need to change this as we go. Um, so then four things there. Oh, that was perfect. So for all of the draws, if the red count is less than the minimum, set the minimum to our new red count. Same for the blues and same for the greens. And then at the end, we want to do the multiply of all of them. So I'm going to return a minimum dot red count and then these are pluses we're going to make them multiplications copilot was doing pretty great there um so it says minimum power is never used that's not super true oh it's because part two is never used uh let sample part two answer debug out our sample part two answer sample part two answer is two i do not think that's the right number uh, so let's take a look at that and see what's going on because uh, the right answer here is 2,286. Uh, that would have been way too easy just to roll through that quickly. <laughs> um, and we're summing them, right? Yep. Um, so I actually think that the first thing that I want to do is just see what these minimums are. Um, so in minimum power, I'm just going to do a debug here for our minimum and see what we're getting for these. Because that seems pretty interesting. Ooh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Ah, lots of zeros. Wait. The minimum number. Oh. Oh, the minimum uh, cube count. Which is the opposite of minimum. These actually want to start at zero. These are actually like the, the minimum cube count is actually the max of all of these. Um, ooh, and let's try this. Let's try a, let's try a, uh, LLM thing. I can say, change this from calculating the min to the max. The variable is called minimum cube count now. Uh, we're going to do four, GPT-4. Oh, I don't have this set up right now and I've used all my things. So I guess we're going to try GPT-3.5, but it kind of isn't as good. So I don't think... Oh, wow, it actually was fine. I think that's right, but let's read it closely to be sure, because I don't trust it too much. Minimum cube count. Uh, change name to minimum cube count. Sometimes things like this are actually like, well, first of all, that was just the wrong thing, and I actually don't know if that was ever going to be faster than just typing it myself, but, you know, it's okay. It's fun to try new tools. Okay, uh, so let's read this again, though. The minimum we need is zeros to start with, but for each one, if you have more reds than the minimum, set the minimum to your red. Same for blue, same for green. That looks better. 2286, 2286, love it. Okay, let's get rid of the debug, just because it's going to produce a lot of noise. 2286, and let's get my input wired up there. Let part two my answer. Debug part two my answer. 78,111. Woohoo! There we go. That was part two of day two, Advent of Code 2023. Let's get our commit. Day two, part two. Uh, awesome. Uh, but that was pretty quick and nice and easy. So let's take like maybe 10 minutes and see if we can clean up anything here. I felt like there was some stuff at the beginning that I said I might want to clean up. So let's just go do a little code review. Um, I don't actually remember what I said. Oh, I know one of the things that I wanted to play with here. Um, when we are parsing things, so when we're parsing cube draw, we split on white space here and then collect to a vec. I was wondering if I could collect to a tuple of string and string. But I don't think I can, especially because it doesn't know whether that'll work.
yeah no okay so we're gonna we're gonna go to a vec that's fine um i could parse to a tuple like kind of manually if i wanted to but it's easy to collect on a vec and then just grab these things out actually i guess what i could do here if i wanted it to be a tuple is once i have a vec um i could do uh like from my vec ah there we go uh from my vec do yeah make it a tuple by grabbing things out of it uh but that doesn't really oh wait i can even operate on this as a because this is now a vec of tuples oh no no i said i told count for color that these were vex which is not true anymore they're going to be a tuple of string to string um, and then this is now going to be cd.1 and cd.0. Doesn't really matter. No. No, it really doesn't. But it's fun. Um, like, it makes it a little nicer because I only have two items here. I can do some more type checking. Um, and these will blow up here now when I convert the tuple instead of later. That one really doesn't matter because we're just blowing up anyways. Um, but, but yeah. Yeah, thanks CodeGuru, thanks for hanging out. Hope to see you around later, maybe for day three and continuing, but thanks for coming. And yeah, glad I uh, have a little more luck than day one. <laughs> um, so that's the tuple thing. I actually don't really know if I love that refactor. It's pretty fine, but not amazing. Um, we could add error handling, but that's really just adding what I would do for error handling. Oh, let's, let's do it. It's fine, right? Cargo add my app so my app is my favorite error handling thing in rust right now especially for applications um because it gives us some nice printouts especially with the fancy feature flag it has some really nice cli output so basically what we're gonna do here now is uh add some returning uh results basically everywhere um and yeah so let's do that really quick and then i think we'll wrap up here so let's start with any place that I unwrap. Uh, so yeah, now instead of parsing, always returning this, it will return a result. Um, and I am going to use the myet result type, which just hard, not hard codes, but it um, wraps the error type to always be their report type or by default their report type, um, which is really nice as we'll see in a second. Um, so there we go. We can have it return okay. And then where we're unwrapping, Instead of unwrapping, what we're going to do is we're going to call into diagnostic, which we're going to have to import diagnostic, which of course it didn't want to come up. Oh, well, the dot dot didn't help. Import into diagnostic. So that's going to take whatever error parse gave me and give me one of the Maya reports that we need for result here. And then we can use the question mark to return that if we have it. Um, and I think that's the only one we have here, except for the fact that I know we're going to have more down below. So let's see where else we have it. Um, count for color, apparently. Oh, because this might not be a U32 as well. That makes sense. So let's make this be a result. Um, and then this unwrap can be a dot into diagnostic to return an error unwrap or do an okay of zero and then we're just gonna um oh actually there we go we don't need that so now it's going to return a result of a u32 um and then in the counts here where i use them i can make this return a result of self instead of just a self um, so then if we're in the success case, we want to return an okay. No errors here. Oops, can't type. Um, but these ones all have error cases that we need to forward up. There we go. Um, where are more unwraps? Unwrap or is okay. It doesn't panic. It just uh, does the or half if there is an error. So that one's fine. Oh, and perfect. That was our last unwrap. That was not bad at all. Um, except now it's saying that we have a few errors, which is to be expected. Um, when we parse all of these, these now give us a result. So when we collect to a vec, what we actually have is a vec of results. Um, and here's a really cool trick that we can do. So when you have a vec of results, um, one thing that I like doing is turning that into a result of vec. So if there's any error in the vec, we error and don't get the whole vector. So how to do that is we just tell it that we want to collect to that instead as a result of vex. And now you can see that we have a result of VEC of cube draws. 
And let's look at that one more time before. So before, we had a vec of results. And just telling collect that we actually want a result on the outside um, does the magic for us of basically um, going through. And if there is any errors in the vec, um, just returning that first error it finds. Um, and then what I want to do is I just did another let to shadow it so that I could uh, use the question mark here and get rid of the result. Um, so that in cube draws, I didn't have to like do cube draws, colon, cube draws, question mark. Just syntactic, not a big deal. Um, and then let's see, let's follow our errors. I see my red errors down over here. Oh, actually, let's do the test ones first because that seems like a good thing to do. Uh, so parse gave us an error potentially. Um, and in specs, actually, unwrapping's pretty fine. But we're going to finish it um, the same way, and we're just going to have our test return a result so that we can continue using um, question marks and all that. Um, okay, so there we go. We parse the thing, uh, get rid of the error, and then assert that the counts are the same. And test. Oh, still some compilation errors up top. We'll fix those, and then we'll get the test for um, okay, so, games, ah, so this is the same thing, we're collecting to a vec, but I think I want to collect to a result of vex, um, and then forward the error up, ah, so that means that part one actually needs to return a result too, which makes sense, I just missed, we just hadn't got there yet, um, oh, and that was easy, so since it returned a result, we just had to wrap the return value in okay, and it looks like that was all we needed to do. And part two, I think, is going to be basically the same. Instead of a vec of results, we want a result of vex. We throw the error up. And then this just needs to return an OK value. And I think we're pretty ready. Almost, I guess. Because uh, we still need in our main um, to return a result, just like everything else, so that we can continue throwing errors up the stack. Um, and then when we call part one, we need an error. Part one, we need an error. Part two, part two, everything gets to be errorable. Cargo run. And there we go. Awesome. So let's break something really quick to see if we can just see an error. And then I think we'll wrap up. So let's say in our sample input, what if one of these was a negative number? Or what if one of these was just not a number at all, right? ABD is not going to be something we can parse to a number. So what we will see now is we get a nice error that's an invalid digit found in strength. So just in general in Rust, the errors are okay, but you kind of want to augment them if, if you want to be more descriptive. So this doesn't tell us what the string was or what the invalid digit was. It just errors. Um, so that's something that we might want to add later. We wanted to add some contexts to these. Uh, so like after I call these into diagnostics... Um, I could wrap them with a context and like write invalid cube count. Maybe I could even put the string that we're trying to parse in there so we could see it um, and stuff like that. But I think we're okay. We got our errors piped all the way through and it's running nicely, giving us the same answer it was before. And I think we're going to we're going to stop there. Add error handling uh, for day two. Awesome. Let's push that up just before I forget. Yeah, that, now it's doing that. Now tappy tappy. There we go. Okay, and that was day two, part one and two of Advent of Code. And I think I'm going to wrap up here and get offline. I am going to try to do the next one in just about 11 hours at midnight when it comes out. So I will see everyone back here then for part three of Advent of Code. And if, uh, in the meantime, I'll see you all online. Thanks, team. Bye.